welcome to Asset TV. I'm Sarah Makuda. Investment by women and in women is growing. Here to shed some light on the dynamics of female investing and empowerment is founder and CEO of Key Financial Incorporated and top-ranked woman financial advisor, Patty Brennan. Patty, welcome to Asset TV. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's great to be here with you. We're so glad that you're here. Now, gender equality is in the spotlight like never before, and it's highlighted the importance and power of being financially stable. So how can we further empower women through awareness? You know, I think what's happening here is there is more talk about it. You know, as a financial advisor, the one thing I tell people is whether you realize it or not, you really do have a financial plan. So how are you tracking? Where is that leading, leading to? Um, you know, it's one of those things, instead of wondering where your money went, why don't you tell it where to go? How's that for a concept? <laughs> That's really what financial planning is all about. Right. So that's really it's the what I love is that there's more talk about it. And what I think is even better than that, Sarah, is that women are beginning to feel like, oh, yeah, I can do this or I can work with someone who will explain it to me in a way that I understand. And then I can do the things that are necessary to make me feel financially secure. So when you encounter a, a female client who is more conservative, mm -hmm. do you encourage her to be more risky? How do you what do you do to get them? to diversify, diversify there. You know, now that we understand how the brain works, yeah. it's to appeal to that analytical side. Okay. People, and I would say everybody, but mm -hmm. especially women just want to be educated. They want to be treated with respect mm -hmm. and not talked down to. And you know, if you just take a few extra minutes to explain, this is what we're recommending and here's why. I often tell people, you know, part of the, one of the most important things that I do as a financial planner is to save people from themselves. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Because that you know, true. you know, especially, you know, men tend to be impulsive, so we gotta kinda tamp that down. Mm -hmm. And women, you know, tend to be almost too conservative. And I understand that there's risk. There's risk in 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 markets and things of that nature. But if it's explained in a way that's understandable, to, that, that, that it's actually a function of time, not, not up and down, but mm -hmm. how, how long you're going to have that money invested, for example, then if you, if you understand that, when it happens, mm -hmm. you're not going to be surprised. In fact, I tell people we expect a bear market every year. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going into this year and saying, you know what, let's just plan on there's going to be a bear market. What would be the impact on your situation this year, next year, and for years to come? Okay. How much of an impact would it have? And again, not winging it, mm -hmm. we run the numbers. Right. Do, a, do a stress test, do an analysis. Speaking of, of the current market, how are your clients reacting to the volatility and just recent trends that have happened mm -hmm. in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. You know, it depends on how, how long they've been a client. Okay. If they've been a client for a long time, it's a ho-hum. Okay, been here, done that, I know what Patty's gonna say. Okay. Uh, newer clients, again, it's part of that education. It's, it's more um, explaining what's happening, mm -hmm. why we believe it's happening, and more importantly, what we're gonna do about it. Okay. Sometimes the best thing to do is nothing, <laughs> True. right? And it's, although it's often really hard to do. Well, it's emotional, right? People react to, to things and they, they either panic or they, right. it's all kind of Right. intertwined into psychology, which is really is. what you've, you've focused on. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting mm -hmm. yeah. that um, yeah. men and women's brains function, I mean, we know they all function Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness, do they ever. Yeah. <laughs> so something that you, you mm -hmm. s separated men and women, I guess, uh, you people who are the caretaker perspective, they take that kind of perspective versus the number crunchers. Right. Explain, I love those two terms, yeah. explain those two terms and are they terms that are extremes that you try to find a middle ground when you mm -hmm. encounter either mm -hmm. one of those personalities? It's a really good question. You know, I don't know if you know this, but that caretaker kind of comes back from my, my, my previous profession. I used to be an intensive care nurse. Oh, okay. So Great. I know I'm throwing <laughs> your curveball there. Right. Um, but, you know, it really has, has been very helpful because it, you know, it, it, I've learned how to really listen 100% to allow each person kind of empty their heart with whatever it is that's important to them and what they worry about. At the same time, you got to have some substance. Again, my pet peeve is people or advisors who just wing it. Oh, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Well, how do you know? 
What evidence do we have of that? A real financial plan is really empowering because to me, like progress is one of the most incredibly wonderfully reinforcing mechanisms. Because if you have a plan and you say, okay, Sarah, we're gonna do A, B, and C, and then we're just gonna monitor how, you're, how it's progressing. And it's gonna do either this or it's gonna do that. First of all, the sooner you realize that you're off track to those important things that are, that, those things that are important to you, mm -hmm. the easier it is to fix it, right? Yeah. But it's really fun when you see, wow, hey, this is really working. Hey, you know what? This monthly savings, this automatic savings that we set up, it's, it's actually working to the things that we talked about. So um, again, to answer your question, that understanding, those fears, kind of get them out, get them out on the table, really listen 100%, and then figure out strategies. It is, you got to have the substance. What is the savings rate? What, you know, what access do you have? you know, to 401ks, retirement plans. How much tax are you paying? What, you know, when are you going to retire? You know, the, these are things that you can control, right? Um, what do you want to leave to your, fa the, your family and the people that you love? How do you want that? What do you want that to look like? And it's, it's also kind of an accountability system. It's like, okay, you've shared with me these things that are really important to you. Let's just check in with each other to make sure you're still tracking well for that. I find too when you know when you have to put something on paper it forces you to sober up and really understand where you stand and where you want to go and it makes it so much it's easier real. to stick to yes. stick to the plan right it makes it real exactly yeah. I, I find you know we all talk about oh setting goals setting goals and it's sort of like oh yeah here we go again <laughs> we gotta set goals everybody Boring, says you gotta set. Yeah. what is it about that process Sarah you know, what, why do we all say the same thing? It's because time after time, studies have shown people who have a financial plan are far more successful at accomplishing their objectives. Again, another Fidelity study found that people who worked with a financial planner and had a financial plan had a net worth at retirement that was 150% higher than those that don't. Okay. okay, so take your net worth and almost double it. Okay. How's that feel? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Yeah, definitely. So it's it's the process of just checking in, having those objectives. And and I, I also think that when you kind of make it and take all these things, these feelings, those goals, those wishes, those that bucket list, mm -hmm. put it into an action plan and see how you're tracking, it it, it kind of releases this invis invisible energy. Oh, all of a sudden, you know, and I've seen it for 30 years, all of a sudden people say, you know what, we really do want to get that house at the shore, or we really do want to do this. So instead of doing A, B, or C, that money is going to go in towards a down payment there. And they see that growing, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they don't miss the A, B, and C because they're, they're saving for something that's really more important to them. Absolutely. Um and to have a plan, you know, being educated, I know April mm -hmm. was Financial Literacy Month, to help women, to educate them, to understand and to have a plan is empowering. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. all kind of, oh, it all comes yeah. full circle. It, it kind of gives you that sense of security. I guess the best example I can give you is, and this is a true story, mm -hmm. so I have four kids, right? And education is really important to my husband and I. I. We wanted to provide for their college education. Mm -hmm. So every time, when I got pregnant, with Michael, I did a little calculation and I found that if I, we saved $387 a month from the day I got pregnant and did that all the way through those years mm -hmm. that we would have enough money to send him to a private college wow. if we wanted to. Okay. This is a true story. So <laughs> every time we got pregnant, I set up a separate account, set up another $387 a month. Wow. To the point where when I got pregnant with my fourth, <laughs> the first thing that Ed said to me was not, oh, I'm so happy we're doing this. <laughs> no, he's like, where in the God's name are we going to find $387, Patty? Uh, and you know what yeah. I said? <laughs> I kept it for, right? <laughs> you know what I said to him, Sarah? I said, you know what, Ed? I don't really know, but we're going to do it anyway. Go ahead. And when <laughs> Michael was in second grade and they were talking about certain things and they, even, you know, as he was going through high school, college education, his education was a done deal. 
it was a done deal in my mind and I could focus on other things. Yeah. So it was just, and it's very empowering. It's got, you know, you talk about peace of mind and feeling like, wow, you know, we can do these things. Absolutely, to start that early, that's, that's so disciplined, that's so commendable of you. That's another, that's another part of it, it it's discipline, but also like setting up um, automatic uh, transfer is the way to go because I know I absolutely. forget how much money is going into that account and then when it's gone I don't miss it because I'm like, mm -hmm, oh right, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have it really ever to begin with. Exactly, yeah. I'm a big fan of automating your savings and paying your bills the old fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> so why do we do that? So you automate your savings so if you don't see it, you don't spend it. And when you're paying your bills the old-fashioned way, you know, it really kind of forces you to say, gosh, you know, this, 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 you know, cable bill's really high. Are we really watching all these channels? So it's kind of an interesting process. But again, automating everything, we're all busy, yeah. you know? Nobody has time to really think, okay, I've got a little money. Where am I gonna put it this month? Where am I gonna put it? And people just, it's human nature, we're just not gonna do it, yeah. right? So there's lots of things that are screaming for the every dollar that you earn. Mm -hmm. The kids' sneakers, the this, the, you know. But it's so important for you to save for yourself first, for your family first, for those things that you've identified are really, really important. Great. Um, here's a, a hot topic for you. I know the gender wage gap is obviously still mm -hmm. a hot topic. Yep. Um, are we doing enough as women? What more can we be doing to empower women and to start to close that gap? It's, it's interesting. It is, I love the fact that the conversation is coming up more and more mm -hmm. because women are beginning to realize, you know what? I am worth more, right? So it's, again, comes back to that old insecurity, mm -hmm. that old feeling like, you know, I don't know whether or not I'm really worth it. You know what? You're worth it. Men on the other side, they're out there saying, you know what, they're, they're, they're feeling that they're worth it a lot of times when they're not, yeah. right? So yeah. to just step forward, say yes, take the risk, and, and you know what, it, it, yes, yes, we have to ask for more. We have to, you know, be recognized for what we contribute. Do you think that's going to be what, just getting women to do that, to take that step more and, and realizing their own worth, mm -hmm. that that's what's going to get us there? Yes, okay. I think first it comes from within us to realize and recognize the contribution that we're making. Um, and I think it is happening. I, I, I see it in lots of different areas. With clients who are coming in, it is not unusual for women to be the, so, the main breadwinner. Absolutely. And that's happening more often than not. Um, so we are seeing progress in that area. Finding balance, I guess that's something. What is it, you know, finding, you mentioned things that are important to you and, yeah. and focusing on those goals, but there should be a balance. So if mm -hmm. you're putting so much money toward a savings account, you should also maybe treat yourself sometimes. You're not getting bogged down with, I have no money ever right. because I'm worried about right. retirement. Right, yeah, because then it feels like sacrifice. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a diet. All <laughs> right, exactly, you, you, you heard that. I, I'm not a big, I, I don't believe in budgets, budgets okay, right? Okay, no, no budgets. Budgets are like diets, <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it, right? right. So, so to me, you're absolutely right. It's really important from time to time to reward yourself. I guess the best example, again, of, of this is when we were first starting out. Ed and I had nothing. We, had, we didn't have two pennies to rub together. I had like a 20-year-old car with, with scary brakes and no air conditioning. Oh, no. Okay. And it was like 105 <laughs> degrees, terrible. And Ed kept on saying, Patty, just get yourself a car. Get you do this. You know, just, just, just go ahead and do it. And I, I basically said, you know what? Just wait. Let me, let me just do certain things, and then we'll do it. Let me just... Accomplish a certain thing. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, Sarah, when I hit that target, I went out and got that car. Every time I got into that car, I was reminded that I did something that I didn't think I could do. Yeah. So that's what those rewards do. Now, it doesn't have to be a car, right. it could be, you know, something you put on your desk, it could be a great outfit, but yes. I am very big on rewarding yourself because, again, that's how you build that reinforcing mechanism and momentum. Okay. No, I, I, I'm all about the rewards. Yeah. I reward myself probably too much. Um, so we think that women are more risk aware and less deluded about their financial competence. Is that, is that a fair statement? I think we already kind of touched on that, mm -hmm. that women are more conservative in what they're, um, right. in what they're willing to, to take risks with. But it's more of an awareness thing. And, and I'm, the lack of education to say that, no, you're not, you know, you don't need to be um, or feel like you're inferior to a man in terms no, of financial knowledge. Absolutely. Are there ways you, su you can suggest for women to better educate themselves? I, I absolutely believe that the education aspect is the most important thing. 
and there's wonderful sites, there's wonderful studies, there's wonderful little tools on, on the web that'll introduce women to investing, diversification, asset allocation, mm -hmm. et cetera, because they're, they're big words and they can be often confusing. Like diversification is not the same thing as the, the asset allocation. They right. are very different. So how does that work? Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't help, you know, some people are better going to classes. So you go to college classes or adult education and you learn about these things. And the key is, is to learn from people who are going to explain it in ways that you can understand. They're going to, you know, make it, make it so that you can really understand it and act on whatever it is that you need to do with confidence. Definitely. And um, the importance of kind of when they do finally get to the point where they need a financial advisor. What are some questions they should be asking to find that they're a good fit? I think it's yeah. always good to, I know women, not to plug yeah. women on the show, but sure. um, women as financial advisors are a little bit easier to sit down and talk to, at least mm -hmm. from my perspective. How do, how do anybody, men or women, gauge if they're the right fit for that financial advisor? It's a great question. I think, first of all, you want to make sure the chemistry is there. Mm -hmm. How much does that person actually listen to you versus talking over you yeah. versus talking at you? <laughs> you know you know what yeah. that's all about. Yeah. So that, that, that skill, that's an important skill and it's yeah. important to be heard. Um, I think that you know when you're meeting with somebody to get a sense of what their process is. Again, you know, there are some aspects of this industry that are all sizzle and some that are substance. You really do, I believe you need the substance as well. What, what's the process? How do you monitor things? How do you communicate with us, et cetera? That's really important. I also think it's important to make sure that there aren't any biases. Um, you know, you don't want to necessarily go to someone where, you know, everything's a hammer. You know, all they have is a hammer and everything looks like a nail, right? <laughs> so you want to make sure that they've got a holistic approach and that there aren't any biases. I think that's, personally, I think that's important. Working with a fiduciary, that F word that people are now mm -hmm. talking about. <laughs> and that's a big word. So yeah. what is a fiduciary? A fiduciary's obligation is to make sure that whatever we do is in your best interest. No conflicts of interest exist, mm -hmm. that everything is transparent, you understand it. You know, people have to get paid, right? So how, are, how is that person going to be, be paid? How are they communicating it to you? Okay. Is it kind of wishy-washy or are they putting it here and saying, this is how I'm going to get paid and this is how it's going to work, okay. right? So, you know, I think that, you know, most human beings understand that professions have to earn, you know, an income as well. Right. Uh, I think if I, if we're not, then we're not going to be there for you when you really need us. So we have to go have a good business model and a sustainable business model over a long period of time. I think maybe another good question is to find out about their depth. You know, mm -hmm. while I may be the face of Key Financial, mm -hmm. I'm really just the face, Sarah. <laughs> Honest to goodness. I have a team of 21 people who just take care of my clients. So we've got, you know, you've got, you know, me, I might be the face of it. They do all the work and they are the ones that are communicating, et cetera. They're younger. They've been with me, with me for many years. Okay. And I think that that's really important. Definitely. So I'm sure you do a lot more than you give yourself credit for. What in this industry, what is your superpower? Hmm. <laughs> in the industry, what is my superpower? Yeah. Or what do we, I would say that when I get feedback, it's it's that I make make people feel like they're the only person in the room, that, okay. and that things that are important to them are important to me, that their family is my family, and that I would do anything for them. I think the communicating things in ways that they can understand, rather than talking at them or talking over them. I think that that's something that I've always worked on, I always pride myself in, that's the kind of feedback that I get, that, I'm, that, that people can tell me anything, that they know that it's sacred, mm -hmm. and that it's such a privilege, and it's such a wonderful thing that people are able to share their deepest and darkest fears, the things that they want for their family, mm -hmm. uh, the things that keep them up at night, and the confidence that they know that behind the scenes, we're gonna make it all work for them. That's excellent, so you're basically, you're 
superpowers to empower other women. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, so, for specifically for advisors who are watching this program, what is the takeaway that we can? What can they take away from this conversation? I think that for exi for advisors mm -hmm. as they approach women in particular, mm -hmm. because the, the 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 qualities and the attributes that I'm talking about with you today. Mm -hmm. There are men who have them as well. Sure. It's it's again that comes down to self awareness. It's that that um, emotional intelligence, right? That taking a common sense approach to things, being self aware, and really listening to the other person, is really really important. Those soft skills are a lot more important than men often realize. In addition to that, women financial advisors also have to understand that it's not just the soft skills, that there's got to be tangible evidence of what you're doing for your clients so that they feel like, wow, this is really making a difference. So I think that to have the tools, and I'm going to say spend the money, I, you know, it's, it's have the technology to have mm -hmm. the planning systems so that each client has their own private website, for example, that they can monitor not only their investments, but how their investments are producing the outcome that they're looking for. That is really cool. That's when you're providing a really valuable service that they can get 24-7 yeah. and that no other advisors really are, are, are doing. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great idea. I've never mm -hmm. heard that, uh, that yeah. advice for anybody. For women investors who are watching this program right mm -hmm. now, what is the takeaway from this conversation? I think the biggest takeaway is to resist the urge to put this off. Resist the urge that those insecurities might be holding you back. You have everything that you need. You can do these things. It's not that difficult. You know, it's, 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 it's never too late, Sarah, until it's too late. <laughs> so don't put it off. Start somewhere. Start from where you are. It's okay. It's yeah. perfect, right? Perfect. Well, Patty, thank you so much. You were such a delight to have in the studio today. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having me. This was great. Absolutely. You're welcome anytime. I'm Sarah Makuda, and this is Asset TV.